When you fall, you say I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and get up and keep going and you're going to see less and less because it is not about you. It is only about what Jesus did. Only about what he did and your faith in it. And, and the fact that we're called to be hated under glory. That's what we're called to do. And you know what? We've been graced to do it. Jesus suffered horribly for us. He was made that for us. And he is rejoicing and, and advocating for us right now and has never left. Because if you're in Christ, it don't belong to you. Their evil prophecies don't belong to you. Their evil prognostication don't belong to you. Their desolation, it doesn't belong to you. It's not for you. Their dark women, it's not for you. It's not for you. It's not for you. It's not for you. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Apostle Chantro Davis. Today is June the 9th of 2021. I'm recording this because it is doing my J1 to J1. What can I say? When the Lord starts speaking and they start piling up, when it's time to start recording, it's time to start recording. Some of these I need to record now. Uh, some he may have me to load up. Some he may have me scheduled right along with the normal messages because I already have quite a few on top of the multitude uh, that I already have to uh, deliver to you guys. So I'm going to get right into this message. I pray in the name of Jesus you will go and that you have been circulating messages during this J1, J1. Those of you who have not been online, I told you I have been online only for the premieres. And of course, I do work on the back end of my ministry websites. But as far as great browsing and, and being on social media for fun, none of that, all of that shut down. No Facebook, no any of that. But what I work in the back end to load up and to prefer my websites is something different. Um, so those of you who have been following along, uh, I pray you have been circulating according to the word that you gave. I pray that you have been mindful of the ministry that has been feeding into you as I'm going before the Lord to not only hear from him, but to build myself upon my most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. And the Lord has mighty things to say, because what I can tell you, and even with revelation, he's given me on some visions that it is a time where even the communication with the Lord will be different. It will be on a higher level. It will be ways of communications that we have not received uh, hitherto. Because we're coming into a time where it's going to take the spirit of God and power. This is what is meant when the word of God says not by power nor by might, but by my spirit. It means not by your power, not by human power, not by human wisdom, not by human knowledge. How do I know? He said, wait. As he told the apostles to gather together and wait till you be endued with power from on high. That power is of the Holy Spirit. Not in man's power, not in your own doing, not in your own knowledge and wisdom will he bring these things to pass. He will deal and communicate in a way that's higher than the ways you have known. That's again where he spoke that my ways are not your way, uh, thoughts are not your thoughts and neither are my ways your ways. But he's trying to give you his thoughts and his ways. Because when his word comes down to you, you have his thoughts. When you read his word and it quickens you, you have his thoughts. He's trying to get you to come in alignment and agreement with his thoughts and ways so that he can move fluidly through you as a holy con doing getting through you to get to others that's the higher thing which is why the apostle said we desire fruit that will abound toward your account that's the higher call because when they are bound in fruitfulness how many how many you know how many you know your reward is going to be that much greater because you made another fruitful but too many people want to keep people coming to pick from their tree rather than letting them get their own fruit too many people want to lead you to ride on their grace rather than making you flow in your own you're not getting in on the skirt tail or the back end of nobody's coat. You must bear record of the word of his grace. You must bear communication and proof that you've been with him and you belong to him. You must bear the fruits of the spirit. No more eating and surviving off the food of another person who has grown in the spirit. That's why many can't sit under this ministry. I won't let you stay there. You must grow. The Lord requires it. The kingdom requires it. And I would not be one of those held accountable because I chose to keep you small. Because I want you to come to me. No, I need you to come off, draw, draw from the breast. Come off the breast. Come off the milk. He said, who shall I teach knowledge? He has drawn from the milk. You still on, you still on milk and you think he's going to teach you knowledge? He can't. We must grow. And I'm going to get off in this because I'm going to speak to you before I get off into the, what this message is. This is a prophetic word of the Lord. 
I'm, I'm trying to think of how I can put this because there's many ways the enemy can deceive you and to walk it away from rejecting, disregarding, dishonoring, look over and or even despise. Despise you just think little over. You just pass right on over they would. And many are going to do this to the very people who were sent to speak into them. The enemy has tricked many. I have to use examples that I've gone through and what I know by knowledge. Is that I know the enemy used certain people in my family. I have to use this as an example. Who did nothing but lie, lie, lie and divide. Because they saw how people were drawn to me. The young people would sit at my feet and listen to me. And because I was kind to everybody. But they don't understand that. They, they, people are drawn to where they're treated with love. That's why they were drawn. But to sin, and I'm giving this example because many of you are experiencing this not in your life, but in ministries. Because the enemy will send people before you because of the goodness that is shown in you. Your light begins to shine. Many people say, well, how, how can the enemy do that when he don't know who you're going to be? Okay, we're going to go back again to stars and destiny. To where when the men came, they said, where is he that is called the king of the Jews? But we have seen his star in these, and it read. Your star reads. For you are the star generation. Your star reads who you are. Some will go up illegally to get it. But nevertheless, they get the information illegally. This is what they call the spirit of divination and going by ways of witchcraft and sorcery and other ways to uh, go into people that peep and that mutter and that chant. They go up illegally and get a taste. But they can't. They don't have the power to remain. You have the power by way of the Holy Spirit to remain in the realm to where you see. Everything else and going up the back end is illegal. And they fall would be just as hard as that as that act is wicked. The enemy has sent many of you, sent people, he sends people before you. He sends people during the time you're there, and he'll send people after you've gotten there to cause you not to receive from who you should be receiving from the way you should be receiving from them. And this is what was done in the family. Every person was uh literally every one of them. Where closeness was, where receptivity was. Why? It's because of who I was going to be. So he has to poison the mind before you get to the point to where you're ministering. So they automatically reject and don't receive from you. It's the same thing that this world that the enemy has done to many people in this world. He has poisoned them against the knowledge of their own foundation. He poisoned them against the knowledge of their foundation. Who is that? Christ. Christ is the knowledge and Christ is the foundation. So their mind has been poisoned against the knowledge of him and the foundation of him. So the moment you come saying, have you heard of Christ? They automatically rejection because they've been poisoned against the knowledge of their foundation. And then likewise, the enemy has no new tricks. He just used them again in another way where he has poisoned you against those who the word sent to speak to your waters. Let me get into this prophetic message. He has poisoned you against the people who are sent to speak to your waters. To prophesy to your waters. Many of you have bitter water. You have no flow. Many of you are suffering drought. Many of you have contamination. But you are rejecting, despising, and dishonoring those who the enemy, the Lord, has sent to speak to your waters. This message is a prophetic word, beloved. I received this on June. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure I get this down. Revelation. Mm -hmm. Oh, sent to speak. There it is. June 7, 2021. That's why the date is on this one because of the date I received this. June 7 of 21 on J1J1. The prophetic word. Hearken, beloved. Because many of you are right here and some of you are already in it. You better turn and turn quick because. To receive a word of God, you have to receive who he sent. You don't know when or if you're coming back out after that. You don't know. And this is where the enemy really want to get people because it gets you to bypass who it was. And then you think, oh, he'll send somebody else. When well, that might have been it for you. That might have been it. You're going to wander and stumble the rest of your life. The Lord is merciful, so no one knows. But you also don't know if that's your last. This is why you don't get to choose. To judge somebody on their present state of how they look, whether their possibilities on Christ. Because they're not going to look how you think. They're not going to come how you think. They're not going to always dress how you think. They're not going to have on robes and rings and big old collars and hoods. They're not going to always be old women. Which most of them act really bitter. 
Got plenty of messages on that. Search the channel. You don't know if it's going to be your last. This is why. You cannot afford to be partial or move forth in any form of partiality based on how they look, how they talk, what they have, if they fancy, if they tone is uh, more gentle. You, you need to be led by the Spirit who judges not after sight nor the hearing of his ears. That means you don't be worried about whether the tone sound right or after what you think they look like. The Spirit bears record to the Spirit that they speak into you. And let me tell you where that cut off because the Spirit will not override your will. So if you already sitting there hating and jealous or got your own little preconceived oh, look at them, you didn't shut yourself down for that word already. Because the Spirit will not override your will to receive. This is why you need to rebuke yourself and examine whether you're being fake and make sure you're not partial, impartial, partial in your heart at any time to have somebody look, whether they're young, whether they're old, whether you know them. Because by the Spirit, because a brother and sister is yielded at that time, because they've been yielded to him, he can use them in a moment's notice when they don't even, when they don't even have a fuck our congregation. But because they're hollowed out, he is able to speak to them immediately to get to you. Because of the openness of their heart to him. Because of the surrender of their heart to him. Not whether they have a congregation or a title that they're moving in at the time. And I'm going to minister that word titles again because it is important. Because you cannot operate in the functions that come with that title without receiving it. Because Christ was a title. Son and daughter is a title. Melchizedek is a title. It was not his name. You must bear the title to get the all the gifts and the abilities and the anointing that come with that. To operate in the functions they're with. You must acknowledge who he called you. You can't say I don't acknowledge being a son or daughter and be one. He said that my holy apostles, where you are when he calls you. Don't let people shame you out of who you called. Acknowledging it and being proud and over boastful and boasting in it is two different things. But you must receive it without shame. Those with the Nicolaitan spirit, the spirit of thrashing. The spirit crushes. They want to keep you small. Or as Miss Bradford would say, dream killers. <laughs> no. Okay? Let's get into this message. Again, hearken. Don't disregard, despise, or dishonor anyone. For they may be sent to speak to your waters. Let me read 2 Kings 2, 19... 2 Kings 2, 19-22. And the men of the city said, you can read this whole time because this is about Elisha, the moment the mantle of Elijah fell upon him and he had double. Okay? And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant. My Lord see it. As he said, as you can see, look at this place. It's set up well. But the water is not, and the ground is barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise. Bring me a new cruise. A new vessel. And put salt there in. Put the salt there in. Uh, new cruises and new vessels full of salt. And they brought it to him. Okay. And he went unto, uh, went forth unto the spring of the waters and cast the salt in. Uh, cast the salt mm -mm -mm. cast the salt in there and said, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from this any more death or barren land. There shall not be from this river any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha. I'm going to read that in the message, Virgin, and most likely the voice, because I like how they read before I get to expound it. Okay? You notice they said it remained that way. One day the men of the city said, Elisha, you can see for yourself, Master, how well our city is located. How well the city is located. So even your location, it don't matter how well you locate it. You can have drought in your well in your in your well placed location. You can have barrenness in your well placed location. You can have emptiness in your well placed location. You can have nothingness coming from your well placed location. You can be unfruitful in your well placed location. All the right people and things around you set up and you bring them forth nothing that is abounding. Okay? One day, a minute, let me continue on. But the water is polluted and nothing grows. The water is polluted and nothing grows. He said, bring me a brand new bowl 
and put some salt in it. And they brought it to him. He then went to the spring and sprinkled the salt into it and proclaimed, proclaimed, proclaimed God's word. I have healed this water. It will no longer kill you or poison your land. And sure enough, the water was healed and remained so till this day. As Elisha said, as Elisha said, and I will boldly say, as Chantrell says, when you speak to something in the name of the Lord and the spirit and in faith, and it will remain that way. And so I've said, according to the word of the Lord. Okay? Let me read it again in the voice because I just like it. Men of Jericho, life is pleasant in this city. And as you can see, this city is in an advantageous. You can be in a good location. You're in an advantageous location. Uh, advantageous location. Except for the water. Except for the water. It is contaminated. So the land is barren. So Elisha says, fetch me a new bowl and pour some salt into it. So they brought him the bowl with the salt as he requested. He then walked outside into the water, toward the water spring and tossed some salt in. This is the eternal message. This is the eternal message. This is the eternal message. Speak eternally. Mm. This is the eternal message. This water is now eternally pure. It will no longer bring forth death. Cause the earth or cause the earth to be barren. This water has been po uh, potable ever since. Just as Elisha said. You speak eternal blessings over the water. Just as Elisha was sent, this is a spiritual message, because he was speaking about a land, and a land is what's in your heart. A land is what you have believed God for. Your land is what you have imagined. Your land is what you have built up in the spiritual kingdom. Your land is the place of your appointment. Your land is the place of your destiny. And sometimes it can be in an advantage location. It can be in a proper location. It can be in a spa, a, 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 a booming city. But your land therein is barren. Your land therein is dry because your waters are bitter. This is why we must not reject the purification word of the water and of the spirit. The water in the spirit is the agitation that cleanses your water. The fire in the spirit is the agitation that cleanses your water. That's why words like this you should never run from because it is that very agitation and fire that purifies and agitates the water, causing your springs to bubble up and flow. Receiving this kind of rain of word is how the rain comes down upon you. This is revelation. Whether it's something you did wrong or something the Lord wants you to do right. That rain causes flow. I've told you before. As the Lord gave me example, he spoke to me very clearly. What causes a river to cease to flow? And as I said, I paid attention. Huh. Lack of rain. When the rain does not fall, the river cease to flow. And if, the, uh, if they cease to flow, they will eventually be dried up. But this is not a sudden thing. They will cease to flow. They will flow less and less. They will become stagnant in areas where you have puddles of contamination. Have you ever seen a riverbed or that it started to dry out and some parts of the riverbed was a little deeper than other, but the flow is no longer going? So you got contaminated puddle over here, contaminated puddle over here. This is what I'm speaking. Some of you have contaminated puddles and you have people who have been sent with eyes to see. I have to warn of this because I've had it happen more than once. Well, I had to tell them what was in them. I had to put my finger on it. Why? Why did I have to? Because at that very moment, had they received, he would to heal them. Had they received it with yay, Lord, and humbled, he would have healed them. This is why you can't disregard, despise, dishonor, or overlook those who are sent to speak to your wives. But because, because of what they've gone through, because of what they've been trained up in, because of how they've submitted, they are able to see what you cannot at this moment. That's all this kingdom thing is about. Those who have grown up in Christ pulling others up, and then those who grow up in Christ pull others up. But you have to be willing to receive. You have to love the knowledge of the truth. This is what is meant by you never receive the love of the truth. Not just in the hurt, do you love to hear the truth? Beware. Don't dishonor. Disregard or despise anyone, for they may be sent to speak to your waters. That you may have eternal healing. That you may have eternal production. 
that you I may have eternal fruitfulness, that you may have eternal and abounding grace, and that everything you do will prosper. You see it for your rivers. And when the rivers dry up, demons wander in dry places. They like the dry places, which is where you see contamination, infighting, backbiting, lying, cheating, stealing, competition, jealousy, envy. This is a place that is dry because the water wouldn't allow it. The water and the fire would, 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 would consume that away like the fat of limbs. This is a dry place where you see competition, comparison, jealousy, envy, gossip in the sanctuary. This is a place where the spirit has been silenced if he's there at all. Because he will not permit it. Okay? Grace nuggets, I'm going to notice that I put. Notice, even in an advantage, advantageous, advantageous location, it can be barren and foolish. You got all the advantages. This is why even the money you have, you can be fruitless in every area that's important to you. You can be fruitless in every area that you truly desire. And some of you women that got money, you didn't work because you thought that career was in, and you can't get a husband to save your life. Because there's contamination in the riverbed. There's contaminated puddles. Because the river has begun to dwindle. Don't let it be dried up. Hearken to being partial to who you will listen to. Because love will come in ways and through people you don't expect. Because he's trying to get something to his people. And we got people who are being listened to. Got thousands following them. And they're not speaking anything into you. They tickle us the mirrors. They stir in those emotions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna keep that little another thing that I received on J1. J1 I almost said it out of my mouth because it kind of flows right on into it. Okay. The enemy, the enemy will send people before you, behind you, and doing why to cause you to be contaminated against who you were meant to receive from. I don't have to get this example. I've given it before. Because many of you know you had people you listened to who were being edified and you went and listened to some gossip about them. You went and listened to some negative video about them. You heard and listened to somebody talk about them. And all of a sudden, from that point forward, every time they spoke, you really wasn't receiving the same. You might as well go because you're going. you done. Because to receive the word of God, you got to receive who he sent. And by receiving him, that means an honor, respect. And to regard them. This is why you should not be listening to anyone who will put their mouth on another beloved. It ain't got to do with them whether they're a minister or apostle. God help you with them. But you ain't can't do it with none of them. Let me keep going. Okay. By, by the soul of Satan, unhealed wounds, yielding to sin and the world, they are primed for this. The people that the enemy stir up to allow you to whisper about you, to try to contaminate everything you do, the, the enemy is working through their wounds. And yet they are willing participants because he has to use what's in them. This is that soul of Satan. At any given time, he can use them to lie. He can use them to cheat. He can use them to turn people against you. He can use them to gossip. He can use them to spread false. They, they may need attention. They may be envious. They may have low self-esteem. They may have got inadequacy issues and self-pity, which is the worst emotion you could ever have. He's working through unhealed wounds. He's working through the trauma that's in their gateway. This is why many have to sit still and study and sit on the word that cleanses like this and be healed. So you can receive word given to you rightly. Because many of you, someone will be sent to speak into your waters and say things that you didn't despise them. But they came with that word and it poked some stuff. But that was a purging. So you can bring forth more. But you so small in your spirit, you took it as a cut. How do you know if you took it as a cut or as a purging? As a cut, you're offended. As a purging, you praise him because of the word that you can't hear nothing but what the, the, the couple of words that cut you. Everything that they said, you didn't look over. That's how you know whether you received it as a purging, which is a blessing, or a cutting, which is still a blessing, depending on how much poison you got in you. Your seasons of connection and receiving for growth. This is done because the enemy seeks to cause you to miss your season of divine connections. Which is going to spring forth and catapult mighty growth. 
So it calls you to despise the people who are sent to speak to your waters, that you may breathe forth fruit, so that you may be a river. So that thither when you send forth your river, there it will return again. And there will be a great multitude of fish where that river goes. And there will be great healing where that river goes. And that river will return from where it came. They're trying to cut you off from godly connection. By causing you to miss those who are sent to speak to your waters. Okay? Whether it's to clean, whether it's to stir your water up, whether it's to get that water boiling to where the fire is coming up out of you. It's not always about contamination. It's about to stir that water up so the fire comes out of you. You like a pot? Have you ever seen a, a kettle when that water gets the bottom? It's like, Ooh! you know, you like a, a siren at that point. I only like to use that word. You like a, a trumpet at that point. Because when it gets to boil and that mouth is open. They stirring it. So some of it's to clean contamination. Some people go speak to your water to get you boiling and get you stirred up. To fire you up in the spirit and ignite you. To fill that river to the overflow. To get you through your next season. Okay? By words that cause you to receive that person differently. I already said that. They send people to make you receive differently. All of a sudden, you don't listen to their videos as much. You don't take uh, 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 serious consideration of their word. And then even when you're listening, you in your heart you're struggling and in your mind you're struggling. You might as well just leave until the Lord takes that out of you. Because that's a whole other issue for you to be disregarding and despising the word while you're still sitting there. You'll bring some things upon yourself. So, so deal with what you know is in your heart. Be honest with yourself. Examine your own self. Recover your own soul from the enemy by this truth. Well, that girl, why'd you do that? You know you weren't supposed to do that and repent of it. You recover your own soul. He can't hold you there. Okay? By words they cause you, by word, by thought and heart contamination. This is thought and heart contamination. By dishonor and familiar, familiarity. For this is unprofitable for you. For you to start to dishonor, and I'm going to use myself as an example. You sitting here, you dishonoring, you disregarding, like many of y'all, and you ain't going to get too many more warnings. Then I see you getting on there, and you don't greet me. Trust you'll most likely be blocked out on the next chat. If this is you, listen, because you get on, and you say, hey, everybody, bless everybody, and you don't acknowledge the minister, the one of the, over the platform, your spirit is wrong. You address me. Then you greet your brother. It is a dishonor for you to get on any platform the Lord has given me and not acknowledge who you are eating from. That's like I'm sitting there and I invited you in my house to eat at my table. You walk to my door, don't say how to me, don't speak to the table, start eating. You won't speak because you get ready to have a meal. I won't let it slide anymore. If I see it again, you'll know next time because you'll be blocked off the chat and that's why you won't be able to, be able to chat on. Those of you who have already done this, you've already seen yourself go. If you seek to repent, repent unto the Lord and email me. And if you have been humbled in your heart likewise so, you'll be able to be on there again. Don't dishonor. It won't ride no more. That, 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 that horse don't ride no more. That, that's the last one I'm giving Okay? For it is unprofitable for you to dishonor and to get familiar with. Just because I'm your sister in Christ, I cannot allow you to, to negate the placement he has me. You can't do it. This is how you learn because you learn to submit to the higher authority and you grow. Those who can't submit to the higher authority will never be placed over anyone. I submitted to plenty higher authority. And there, what he told me to do, when he told me to open my mouth, when he told me to share it, when he told me to present myself for service, I went to that church, I served from sun up to sun now, with no question, where you want me, I'll go wherever you tell me. And that's how it was. I moved all the way through that before he put me to minister anywhere. If you can't be led, you will never be able to lead. And he says, as unto the Lord. Because if we're doing things wrong, the Spirit is going to check us. And if we don't, he will take that anointing from us and he will set us down himself. We will answer. But the Lord won't let me sit and let you dishonor or disregard me either. I'm telling you this because he's not going to let me do that anymore. You will be removed. Okay, you will be removed. And for those of you who have been removed and went and lied and got videos took down, because some of you did. <laughs> Better repent while you can. 
But if it ain't honest, don't waste your breath. Because you really feel you ain't done nothing wrong. Don't let the time of no remedy hit you, though. Take heed. Let me keep going. Okay? Don't disregard, overlook, or dishonor, or despise anyone. They may be sick because he can yield to anyone at a grocery store, at the bus stop. Just suddenly these people are just able to yield to him. So at that moment, he, they're going to speak something that you've been waiting to hear that even the people at the places you regularly go to didn't even do it. Because they're too busy doing their own things or favoring other people. And this person was yielded enough that the Lord has been trying to get this to you. And they said it out of their mouth. They may be sent to speak to your waters. Don't let your rivers dry up. Because many rivers, this is the warning, many rivers will dry up. Because they will miss by despising, dishonor, and disregarding those who are sent to speak to their water. Judging by appearance, judging by what you got, judging by how big their ministry is, judging on whether they're male or female, judging on whether they're young or old, despising you, or despising old age. They sent to speak to your water. And the enemy seeks to how you miss this season. Because you don't know if you'll get another one. The Lord is merciful. But you don't know if that was the one that was going to take you all the way out. And some of you are just going to take you through the next season. And some, that was your eternal infusion. Okay? Mm, I like that word. Mm -hmm. The lack of flow. That's prophetic again. Spiritually and physically. The like uh, flow spiritually and physically. No open heavens. That means no rain. No rain means no rain of word. No rain of word means no flow to your river. And no flow means drought. And again, demons wander in dry places. Okay? The decrease of the river flow threatens drought. Many of you, many of you are in a threatened drought right now. You look at how big they are, how many followers they got, how many likes they got, how many people on the chat. You won't even get on there unless you see a lot of people on the chat. And that person was sent to speak to your waters. This is why you need discernment. Because the Lord had me score a person I ain't never heard from before. And he would say, listen to that. And I don't even know them. But what they said was right on everything he just said. Because sometimes he needs to affirm because it quickens and you go for it speedily. This is what you need to learn. Not all, ooh, they look like a sensational, sensational title. Ooh, they look like they got a big house. Ooh, look how many subscribers they got. That's not why you click. The Spirit says that one. Take heed, beloved. Don't disregard, despise, or dishonor. Don't sit to speak to your waters. Lest you suffer drought. Why many do this? Preeminence. It's always preeminence. Always competition. And we know no one but the Lord is preeminent in all things because he was raised far above all principalities and powers that in all things he may have the preeminence. They want you to come to them. They want you to think they fluent. They want you to think they the most anointed. They want you to think they got the best word. When if they were pointing you to Christ, they couldn't come less. Well, you got that good word from them as long as that word is good. Even though a shepherd is supposed to guard their flock, guarding a cage is two different things. Are you of a flock that is guarded? Or are you of a flock that is caged? I ask you again. Are you of a flock that is guarded? Or are you of a flock that is caged? Woe to the shepherds that cage. You can't speak to. They not in our clique. They not in our group. Don't share their ministry. If you listen to that, oh, don't compliment. Don't brag. Don't share that word and say, boy, this word blessed me. Because everybody in the group turn on you. You might be of a flock that is caged. Not guarded. Catch that in the spirit. You're going to miss those who were sent to speak to your watch. 3 John 9, verse 12. 9 through 12. Yeah, they do. Okay. I wrote unto the church, but the, the old trippers, I never pronounced that right, who love it, he loveth to have the preeminence among them. Receiveth us not. You think I don't know that's why I ain't got received a lot of places? Because they be looking at these messages and seeing how I minister. We can't have her come in here. They gonna think we don't know nothing. I told you it's like you don't think a flashlight is bright. It's just somebody with a two fog light come in on the front of a, a, a storm vehicle. They look like they was bright. 
But someone who burned a greater light come in. Why they burn a little greater light? Because while they were sitting up standing, acting like they were prostrating, they was really standing in their heart. And while they up there in humility standing, in their heart they prostrate before the Lord. They're yielding. Not self-seeking. Self-promoting. If that word is goodness from the Lord, you agree and you sure. But I, I, let me keep going. They love the preeminence among them. Receive it thus not. And so many of you will see uh, your, your leader or your shepherd rejecting somebody because they don't want that word that, and you won't even. That's a no-no. Okay? Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds. He said, if I come, I will remember his deeds. Prating against us with malicious words and not content therewith. Neither doeth he himself receive the brethren. Excuse me. Neither do he himself receive the brother, and forbidding them that would, and casting them out of the church. That's what I mean. If they see you sharing other people's minister that that word is fire, and you circulate it, they cast you out. Many won't just tell you to leave, but they'll shun you till you leave. I want y'all to catch that. Many start sharing some of these power messages. You're going to find out what group you in. You're going to find out. Because many ain't going to tell you to leave. They're going to shun you till you leave. Okay? Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Mm. Demetrius had good report of all men and of the truth itself. He got good report of all men and even of the truth itself, which is Christ, the truth itself. Yea, and we also bear record. That should be that way. Good report of all men. And truth itself, yea, and we also bear record. And ye know that our record is true. You listening to this message and how our minister should let you know this record is true. Because if the enemy had anybody that preached like our preach, he would turn his own kingdom up. And the kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. The kind of word our minister would free and strip and remove chains. So anyone should have to ask whether that's by the spirit or not. Because he would be turned down his own kingdom by the words our minister. That should tell you. That my record is true because it is of the truth by way of the truth. And sent by he, he, he who is truth sent me. The preeminence is why many will look past those who are sent to speak to their waters. You will look at the rank. Or how long they've been around. And overlook who was sent to speak to your waters. And some of you, that was your last season. Some of you are on the borderline of drying up. And they sent to fill you to the full to the overflow. But you're judging the looks. You're judging the age. You're judging the number count. You're judging the popularity. You're judging the title of whether you want to click or not. Then you ask somebody I want to swallow. And some of you through dishonor. You're closing the door on those sent to speak to your waters. So your water will, as a result, your, your waters will remain bitter. Your waters will remain contaminated. They will be, and many of you will be dried up. Many of you will lack flow until drought overtakes you because you despise, disregard, and dishonor those who were sent to speak to your watts. Whether it's to clean contamination out, whether it's to stir you up, or whether it's to bring you to a board. That of a raging river, but by way of the Spirit, it washes away all contrary. Many of you are meant to have rivers like this, but because of your love of preeminence for people over you or yourself or your partiality, you have despised dishonor and disregarded those who are sent to speak to your wives. Preeminence means high status of importance or owing. To mark with to be marked for superiority, they want to feel superior to you. The fact of surpassing all others, super superiority, supremacy, greatness, excellence, distinction, preeminence, uh, predominance, eminence, peerlessness. Like you ain't got nobody on your level. You you peerless. I tell you, the class is small. Moving forth in honesty, or heart, the spirit, and truth, yielding to the Lord, small. 
but I ain't the only one. You think you peerless. Transcendence. Oh, don't get me started on that. Importance, prestige, stature, even fame. Because some of these pastors, y'all don't make channels because they, everybody know them. Y'all gonna watch many of them fall. Be merciful because many of them gonna come down. Celebrity. They, they so high, they celebrity. And what did I tell you before? You can go so high. Everybody knows that you have been on the plane and a storm break out. Sometimes the, 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 the pilot can go up and go up so far above the clouds that there's no rain. So y'all, if some of y'all at the ministries where they so far above the clouds, they done placed themselves so high, superiority and prudence, they done went above the clouds and there ain't no rain. And when there's no rain again, there is drought. And when there's, and when there's uh, no, a lack of flow, when there's lack of flow, there is drought. They done went so high, they done went above the clouds. They can receive no rain. And them are the ministries y'all follow. Okay? Based on number and celebrity and whoever, everybody else is doing my might as well. They make the ones, and y'all gonna see. And all the money you've been giving into them, you've been sowing seed into the synagogue of Satan. I done told y'all, okay? Rare superior eminence, that's super eminence. Now they don't want the super eminence. That's these people that think they are sending these woke devils. How you gonna be a woke devil? These woke devils, yeah, because y'all can't sleep. You're one of them dry places. You get no rest. But there's no peace for the wicked and no rest in the house of the wicked. But he has cursed the habitation of the wicked. That's why they call themselves woke. They can't sleep. I'm sure there's a lot of insomniacs in the Democrat Party. And the those who are in the world, they just, just take the Democrats, y'all woke topians. That's because they that's because they can't sleep. He gives his beloved sweet sleep. We are awake. I got a good answer for that. But y'all woke supposed to be awake. We are awake to righteousness. These woke. Because they can't sleep. They, they in disease, mind, body, and spirit. Don't be fooled. They'll trade places with you in a minute if they could. But they love the preeminence. They can't lay it down. They love this world too much. Okay? When the Lord God tells us to know them... And esteem them for the work's sake. Who? Everyone that lives among you. Know them and esteem them. And if you esteem them and they say, I got a word for you. That I mean, this is why he says know them. We ain't talking about no stranger. But by the spirit you will do them. This is why I got to get people to understand. Because when you hear know those that labor, uh, uh, labor among you, it means they think that you got to have a super close intimate relationship with them. We will begin to know each other faster and faster by the Spirit, for the, re the Spirit bears records of itself. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12-13. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them that lab which labor among you. That means they ain't got to be in no church. Know them. They laborers. And are over you. No, they're showing the ones that are over you. This don't just mean in your church. That means you're a new Christian coming in because... Oh. God, I could just go on that. Just stay on course. Because Stephen was a new proselyte. Now, Stephen, what's the guy's name? And he was powerful because he was one of them that the Apostle Paul chose to, uh, to judge things. And he was a new a proselyte. That's a new. That means he was really surrendered. Because it's not how long you've been saved. It's the great, how great is your surrender? Some people, the Lord ain't got to knock around long. They just say, yay, Lord. They'll lay it down. So they, they're going to surpass people that's been in for years. Okay, and are over you in the Lord. Among know those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord is people who are set higher in leadership because of their surrender and persecution and growth by way of the Spirit, having their senses exercised by reason of use, which is use is even obedience. Okay. And the mon and, and, and in the Lord and admonish you. They admonish you. Catch this. Know those which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. What's an admonishment? Warning you. They warn you. And esteem them. Esteem them highly in love for the work's sake. 
and be peace and be at peace among yourself. Because you admonish them for the work's sake, the Lord, the Spirit can move through them. They are sent to speak to your waters. Because this is how the Lord is going to, to, going to have to do it. Because too many people in churches seek the preeminence. Too many people in churches want to keep you babes because they need you coming to them. They need your funds. They need you coming to them because some of them just really like for you to come in and like they just got it all. And they will keep you small. They can't allow you to grow because some of them at home really playing around and you won't be the so superseded thing in the spirit and you won't be getting to see. Know those that labor among you and admonish them for the work's sake because the Lord is going to move through who is an open and willing glory gate at that time to speak to your waters what he needs you to hear so that he can get out of you what he has put in you. Because I told you from the beginning, he placed something in you and it will yield to the right or to the left for faith is mutual. If you have faith for first, first what's going to show up? If you have faith for abundant finances that you may be a blessing to others, that's what will show up. If that's what's on your calling, what's on your destiny? If you have faith to be healed, that's what shows up. If you have faith that you got to take all these medicines and that's the only way, that's what you're going to have. Who breathes on it is who it yields to. Which is why people have beautiful voices given by the Lord and they sing bumping grass songs when they're supposed to be singing unto the Lord. Because they just spent all these years with the hot breath of hell breathing on their gift. <laughs> they just spent all this time with the hot breath of hell breathing on their spiritual gift rather than the cooling spirit of the Ruach and the cooling waters blowing on that gift. You wouldn't let the hot breath of hell bleed or breathe on your gift? Or is the Holy Spirit going to breathe on your gift? The hot breath of hell. Get that. Is hell breathing on your gift? Or is the Spirit? Again, beloved. When you do this, you know nothing as you ought to. Galatians 6 and 3. For if, for if any man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, can we nothing without Christ? We are nothing. But in him we are all. He deceiveth himself. Okay? I'm going to read that in... Uh, uh, oh, that's King James. How do I do that? Okay. I put two and three separate. God help me. And if any man think that he is... Uh, that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. If you think you know anything... You really don't know nothing because you think you know anything. So that tells the Lord, the Spirit, just how little, that should tell you just how little you know. Because you think you know, that tells you how little you know. Because the more wisdom the Lord gives you, the more you realize you know nothing. I want you to catch that. Because the more wisdom the Lord gives you, you realize just how much you know nothing. You know nothing. That's why you have to go and be led by the Spirit moment to moment, day to day, because you know nothing. And those of you who are moving, I'm telling you, this is a prophetic word. Many of your rivers are at the point of drought. You are despising and looking over those who are sent and were sent to speak to your waters. Many of you are on the brink. Take heed. Every bit of partiality that's in you. Gossiping groups. And clicking based on popularity and likes and titles. You are missing those who are sent to speak to your waters. Galatians 6 and 3. And those of you who love the preeminence and those of you who are gossiping and have allowed yourself to be used by the enemy to stop others who would hear, you have hindered their waters being spoken to by through manipulation and demonic manipulation and demonic espionage and spying, you shall proceed no further. Uh, Galatians 6 verse 3, I mean, uh, 1 Timothy 3, 8 through 9. Now as James and James would withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. They resist the truth by doing this. Men of corrupt minds. You have a corrupt mind when you do this. Reprobate concerning the faith. You are reprobate concerning the faith because it is contrary to what faith tells you to do. And you see because faith is not blind. It is not blind because faith has beheld what belongs to it in the written word of God. Faith has beheld what is what belongs to it in the word of God. So it ain't blind, and it's speaking because it is beheld with what belongs to it by reading the word of God. Okay? But they shall proceed no further, for their folly, that word, that word again, shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. As theirs was, James and James was still Moses. They resisted the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. 
And notice he said with with, with Moses, represent like concerning the faith. What was the faith of Moses? He believed God. Okay? Abraham believed God. But uh, we're still Moses. But I don't want to get off course because I'm going to start missing. And I don't want to lose my thought. But they shall proceed no further. For they their folly shall be made manifest. You hear me? Their folly will be made manifest. Okay? Don't miss this season. Some of you are going to get your water spoken to and you're going to hit a whole other level of communication and flow. Some of you, you are at the brink of your drought and you need water. Help, you need water. So quit judging the looks, the count, the video, the popularity, the fame and be needing the spirit. Be led by the spirit because he's going to lead you to those who are sent to speak to your waters. For the Lord of God tells us to rejoice and rejoice over those who walk in our in sustained truth. Uh, uh, 3 John 1 verse 8. Be elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Excuse me. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as thy soul prospered. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. You should rejoice when other people come. You see, verse 3, let me read it again. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee. So when you share videos from people who are brought out of the Echo Ministry about this word that delivered, this word that opened your eyes, this word that encouraged you, this word that spoke into you, this word that I've never seen it explained like that, this word that gave you understanding, and you won't share it. When they should be rejoicing, and those of you who got to send you, you should be rejoicing when you hear other people speaking about another brother and sister that's ministering the word of God and spirit and the truth. You should be rejoicing in such things. But instead, you love the preeminence and you shutting up the doors to those from being in contact and connected with those who are sent to speak to their wives. And you should proceed no further. Okay? You can read the rest of this. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children will walk in truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers. To the brethren and to strangers. Which have borne witness to thy charity before the church. Whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. Bring them forward on their journey. What's that? Circulate it. Let me keep going. If you stick with if you obey, it will be well. That's Jeremiah 7 and 23. This is what I mean by timing. Those sent to speak to your waters, this is the time. Many of you have missed various infusions of your waters being spoken to. And as a result, you are on the borderline of drought. Some of you, you don't miss your next level. Because there are some sent to speak to your waters. And that may be this ministry. It may be another passing you on the street. But don't be bypassing. Because you don't know who he sent to speak to your waters. This is what is meant by being out of timing, out of alignment. You are out of order, therefore into darkness. That is chaos. Because when you miss seasons, one season prepares you for the next. Spring is coming whether you're ready for it or not. Winter is coming when fall ends whether you're ready for it or not. And if you don't allow yourself to be prepared in the fall, you will not be ready for the winter. And likewise, so are the things of the Lord. This is a season where you do not want to be judging uh, or be concerned with preeminence, likes, dislikes, the look of the ministry, how much money they got. You don't want your partiality in your own heart to cause you to dishonor, to disregard, and to despise the ones the Lord has sent to speak to your waters. Beloved, this is a prophetic word. For again, some of you, this will be a bubbling. Some of you, this will be a stirring up unto a trumpet sound. You are being elevated. Some of you, you are the verge of drought. And your rivers will be dried up. And we don't know how long that season will be. Go before the Father. And pray for mighty discernment. Bind up every spirit of partiality and pride in you. Repent of every feeling of presumption partiality and pride that you've had. Ask the Lord to keep you from secret pride, secret fault, and secret sins. Rebuke every communication with it and every yielding to it. Repent and ask the Lord to replenish your ability to hear. 
to wipe the distorted vision of your eyes away that you see you may see clear that you may see with his perception, that you may perceive by way of the spirit, not by sight, not by sound, not by any of your physical senses, but that by the spirit you will know those who he has sent forth to speak to your waters. Grace be with you, beloved. I love you all. Did you know that when you hit thumbs up, you enable more to be fed by the very message that just fed you? So share the spiritual meal, feed others, work a righteous work, worketh evangelism by working the thumb. Thumbs up, feed more. Thumbs up, feed more. So into the good ground of preach be a voice, not an echo, yet only as you have purposed in your heart. For God loves a cheerful giver. The truth, the truth of the word of God. Word of God. First Corinthians 9:11 reads, if we have sown into your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Give only with purpose and cheer, for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account. We thank you for all of your support, seed of your time, seed of your prayers, and the purpose seed of your gifts. To give, visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preachbvne at yahoo.com. To listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace be with you. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.